The debate around the formation of the Earth may have been solved. Here's the latest. Earth and Mars were likely generated by regular collisions between giant moon-to-Mars-sized rocks rather than tiny pebbles clumping together, according to a new Science Advances study. Two options are generally put forward for how Earth and Mars were formed, with the more recent one suggesting the terrestrial planets may have formed by accreting millimeter-sized rocks which drifted towards the Sun from the outer solar system, dragged by the protoplanetary disk of gas and planetesimals that surrounded the Sun. However, the new study found the classical model to be more likely, which involves collisions between moon-to-Mars-sized planetary embryos after the gas disk had dissipated. Here, only 4% of both Earth and Mars was made up of materials from the outer solar system. Scientists analyzed material from 17 meteorites originating from Mars and subsequently compared levels of titanium, zirconium, and molybdenum isotopes from Mars and Earth, with those of different groups of meteorites from the inner and outer solar system to reach their conclusion. One of the study's authors explained to Inverse.com that this version of events may account for Earth's relatively small size compared to equivalent planets in other solar systems because Jupiter may have also formed early on and blocked incoming material from fusing with the planetary embryos. Regular viewers of this channel may see a parallel between the series of early collisions involved in this formation story and a recent revision to the theory about how the Moon was formed via a single slow collision between Earth and Mars-sized planet Thea, with broken off parts of Thea forming the Moon. A Planetary Science Journal said the previous theory failed to explain why the Moon shares much of its chemistry with Earth, not Thea and so developed a separate theory, with Thea initially hitting Earth at higher speeds in a hit-and-run collision, and then between 100,000 and 1 million years later, striking again, resulting in a collision that more fully merged the two. That story in turn chimes with a team of scientists in March theorizing that Thea's remains are what formed two mysterious, continent-sized blobs of rock buried deep in Earth's mantle. For decades, seismologists have puzzled over these two blobs, which sit below West Africa and the Pacific Ocean and straddle Earth's core like a pair of headphones. It was initially noticed that seismic waves from earthquakes abruptly slowed down when they passed through the layers, which suggests they are denser and chemically different from the surrounding mantle rock. These blobs might simply have crystallized out of the depths of Earth's primordial magma ocean, but new isotopic evidence and modeling suggest they are the guts of the theoretical alien impactor planet. The Earth's inner core is growing unevenly. Here's why that process will eventually destroy us all. Earth's inner core grows 1 mm in radius per year, but its east side, beneath Indonesia, is growing faster than its west, beneath Brazil, because it is cooling at a faster rate, causing more iron crystals to form, according to a study in Nature Geoscience. The conversation explains that when Earth was formed, a lot of heat was captured within the planet, and as this has slowly escaped, the inner core's temperature has dropped below the melting point of iron, causing the formation of the crystals. Because of lower temperatures around the east side, iron crystals form more quickly. However, Earth's spherical shape is maintained by constant spinning and the force of gravity, which redistribute the extra mass evenly according to popular mechanics. To establish the disparity, scientists combined the fact that seismic waves travel much faster from north to south through the core than from side to side, with estimates of how iron alloys behave at high pressure, according to the conversation. Popular mechanics attributes the disparity to Indonesia being covered by a mix of islands and expansive sea floor, which is a key place for heat to be shed. The study's lead author said cold tectonic plates diving below Earth's surface may be a cause. Heat loss in Earth's inner core is important because it drives the flow of liquid iron in the outer core, which in turn creates Earth's magnetic field. According to the conversation, in billions of years, cooling will lead to the whole core to become solid, which will leave Earth without its protective magnetic field and leave us exposed to solar and cosmic radiation. One question the study brings up is if lopsided cooling in the core could already be affecting the strength of Earth's magnetic field. We already know from the ESA that Earth's magnetic field has lost 9% of its strength over the last two centuries. That question is just one brought out by a spate of recent studies. For instance, traditionally, students have been taught that the Earth has four distinct layers, the crust, the mantle, the outer core, and the inner core. But earlier this year, researchers from the Australian National University provided evidence of an additional layer inside the inner core. According to the study, which was published in the Journal of Geophysical Research, the inner core is made primarily of iron and nickel. The innermost core is composed mainly of iron and is around two-thirds the size of the moon. The authors of that study said this suggests that some sort of cataclysmic and previously unknown event occurred early in the Earth's history, perhaps as early as 4.5 billion years ago. 
Along similar lines, many scientists believe that the moon formed when a Mars-sized planet called Thea struck Earth around 4.5 billion years ago. And in March, a team of scientists theorized that Thea's remains are what formed two mysterious continent-sized blobs of rock buried deep in Earth's mantle. For decades, seismologists have puzzled over these two blobs, which sit below West Africa and the Pacific Ocean, and straddle Earth's core like a pair of headphones. Up to 1,000 kilometers tall and several times that wide, they are the largest thing in Earth's mantle, says Qian Yuan, a PhD student in geodynamics at Arizona State University who presented the hypothesis at the Lunar and Planetary Science Conference in March. As with the uneven growth theory, scientists notice that seismic waves from earthquakes abruptly slow down when they pass through the layers, which suggests they are denser and chemically different from the surrounding mantle rock. These blobs might simply have crystallized out of the depths of Earth's primordial magma ocean. But based on new isotopic evidence and modeling, Yuan believes the blobs are the guts of the theoretical alien impactor planet. The core is obviously a rich field for new discoveries. But a 2018 study from MIT made that very literally the case, suggesting the interior of Earth is filled with a quadrillion tons of diamonds. Scientists estimate the diamonds are more than 100 miles below the surface, beneath the continental tectonic plates. The study estimated 1-2% to of the cratonic roots may be filled with diamonds, and a statement from MIT News said scientists came to this conclusion while they were trying to construct an image of what the Earth's interior might look like. Researchers created virtual rock models to test what material would allow sound waves to travel that quickly through the cratonic roots. The result was diamonds. Scientists came up with an estimate of around a quadrillion tons of diamonds by taking into account the total volume of cratonic roots scattered inside Earth. Finally, 2019 research found that roughly every 10 years, a phenomenon dubbed geomagnetic jerks causes Earth's magnetic field to change, and the core might be responsible. As previously mentioned, Earth's magnetic field is generated from the core and serves as a protection against solar and cosmic radiation. Whenever there is movement in the core, Earth's magnetic field shifts. When these movements occur suddenly, they are called geomagnetic jerks. According to a 2019 study published in the journal Nature Geoscience, Earth's sudden magnetic shifts may be caused by floating blobs of molten matter originating from the depths of the Earth's core. The team of researchers developed a computer simulation that mimics movements on the Earth's outer core over several decades, effectively recreating the conditions that take place right before a geomagnetic jerk will happen. The story behind the formation of the Moon is getting a major rewrite. Here's what you need to know. Scientists have revised an earlier theory about how the Moon was formed via a single slow collision between Earth and Mars-sized planet Thea, with broken off parts of Thea forming the Moon. According to a new study in the Planetary Science Journal, the problem with the previous theory was that the Moon shares much of its chemistry with Earth, not Thea, and that it requires improbably low initial velocity. To explain both phenomena, the new theory suggests an alternative version of events. Rather than hitting the Earth once, at low speed, merging then and there and forming the Moon, Thea initially hit Earth at higher speeds in a hit-and-run collision. And then, between 100,000 and 1 million years later, the two struck each other again, resulting in a collision that more fully merged the two. Using computer simulations of the massive impacts, Scientists concluded that this version of the Moon's history is a better fit than what is known as the Giant Impact Hypothesis. However, this is not the only recent revision to the Moon's backstory. Scientists have long wondered how life could have evolved on Earth if the Sun's radiation flares were so much more powerful billions of years ago. According to planetary scientists, the Earth's magnetic field could not have protected living organisms around 4 billion years ago, when these organisms were supposed to have formed out of Earth's primordial soup. But last year, a group of NASA scientists took another look at moon rocks that were brought to Earth by the Apollo missions and came up with an explanation. According to the study, published in the journal Science Advances, the researchers found evidence in the moon rocks that the moon probably did have a stronger magnetic field back then. The researchers theorized that this moon magnetosphere could have been quite strong and that the moon was much closer to Earth back then, allowing for the possibility that the magnetospheres of the moon and Earth could have interacted. The theory states that the magnetic fields of the Moon and Earth could have combined to create a more protective magnetosphere around Earth. In this way, the Earth's surface could have been protected enough to make evolution possible. Similarly, scientists have known that the Moon has a tail, like a comet, since the late 1990s. But recently, they learned where it comes from and why it's brighter sometimes than others. According to research published in the journal Geophysical Research, Planets by a team of Boston University physicists, the tail is made of millions of sodium atoms that are blasted 
blasted into orbit by meteoroids hitting the moon's surface. These are shaped into a tail by photons arriving from the sun. Earth periodically passes through the tail. When this happens, Earth's gravity focuses the tail into a beam that wraps around the planet and shoots out behind it. The researchers found the moon's tail glows more brightly during sporadic meteor showers, as opposed to annual meteor showers, which can make the tail glow more brightly but less so than sporadic meteor showers. The moon isn't just some far-off object, though. Its behavior impacts Earth every day. And in July, NASA reported that by the year 2035, every U.S. coastline will experience more high-tide floods, also called nuisance floods or sunny-day floods, when its rotational cycle will amplify rising sea levels caused by climate change. In half of the moon's 18.6-year cycle, Earth's regular daily tides are suppressed, so high tides are lower than normal, and low tides are higher than normal. In the other half of the cycle, tides are amplified, so high tides get higher, and low tides get lower. Global sea level rise pushes high tides in only one direction, higher. So half of the 18.6-year lunar cycle decreases the effect of sea level rise on high tides, and the other half increases the effect. NASA said the moon is currently actually in this tide-amplifying part of its cycle. However, along most U.S. coastlines, this lunar boost has not really made high tides higher than in the past. But NASA warned it will be a different story the next time the cycle comes around to amplify tides again, in the mid-2030s, because then global sea level rise would have been at work for another decade. Less dramatically, research in 2018 showed that days on Earth are getting longer as the moon slowly spirals away from us. Due to gravitational forces between Earth and its satellite, the moon moves away at a rate of 3.82 centimeters per year, causing our planet's rotation to slow, according to the study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. Earth currently completes a full rotation on its axis every 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds, according to NASA. But researchers using astrochronology on geological rock layers found that when the moon was closer to Earth 1.4 billion years ago, a day was just over 18 hours. The length of a day has grown 1 75,000th of a second on average per year and is expected to continue at this rate for the next millions or billions of years. On the release of the study, The Guardian reported that the moon will eventually stop moving when it reaches a stable distance from Earth. When this happens, the two will be tidally locked, rotating at the same pace, with the moon visible from only one side of Earth. Of course, that's assuming either of them survive the sun's destructive red giant phase. Lastly, what's actually going on and in the moon is another fascinating element of its story. Last year, NASA for the first time confirmed the presence of molecular water on sunlit regions of the moon, indicating that lunar water is more widespread than previously known. The water was detected in Clavius Crater, located in the moon's southern hemisphere and one of the largest craters visible from Earth. The results were published in the Nature Astronomy Journal, along with a separate study that looked at how regions of permanent shadow on the moon could keep water trapped on the lunar surface. To detect the water, NASA used a Stratospheric Observatory of Infrared Astronomy, or SOFIA. SOFIA is a modified Boeing 747 that can carry a telescope into the stratosphere at altitudes up to 45,000 feet. According to NASA, this puts SOFIA above 99% of Earth's infrared-blocking atmosphere, allowing astronomers to study space in ways that are not possible with ground-based telescopes. The origin of the water remains a mystery. In a press release on its website, NASA says micrometeorites could deposit water on the lunar surface. Paul Hain of the University of Colorado Boulder, who led researchers on the second study, said other candidates are comets, asteroids, and volcanic eruptions. Alternatively, according to NASA, the water could form as the solar wind delivers hydrogen to the lunar surface, which reacts with oxygen-bearing minerals in the soil to create hydroxyl. Radiation from the bombardment of micrometeorites could transform the hydroxyl into water. Previous missions over the past 20 years confirmed ice in permanently shadowed craters around the moon's poles. Before SOFIA's results, scientists had found evidence of hydration in sunlit regions, but it was not clear if they had detected water, which is H2O, or hydroxyl, which is OH. The findings could have major implications if astronauts can access the water. NASA plans to send the first woman and the next man to the moon in 2024 as part of the Artemis mission, and aims to establish a sustainable presence there by the end of the decade. One other thing that could be investigated is if the moon's interior may contain water, which Brown University researchers theorized in 2017. As mentioned, water was previously known to exist at the moon's poles. However, according to a study published in Nature Geoscience, magma eruptions from the moon's interior billions of years ago trapped water inside tiny beads of glass found in lunar rock samples. 
Satellite data collected by an Indian lunar orbiter in 2008 shows that these water-trapping glass beads are widespread on the moon's surface. The Brown University researchers said those water deposits are the result of magma that came from deep within the moon, meaning its interior must therefore contain water. The researchers did not speculate about how much water the moon could contain. However, they said future missions to the moon could potentially extract water from its surface, which would open the door to extended stays. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.